Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we are going to discuss the scandal which has hit the Dutch press regarding kickbacks, fraudulent in, in investments or transactions in which it seems Reliance Infrastructure Limited is involved. Paranjay. They deny it. They have denied it. But what the Dutch are saying is that it involves the East, what is known route right now as the East-West pipelines. Earlier, it was the Reliance Gas Infrastructure Limited Company. Reliance RGTI. Gas Transportation Infrastructure RGTI. Limited. RGTI, Correct. TIL. Right. And it seems to connect back to a biometrics marketing company, which has been earlier accused of also in the KG Basin case, and in fact has been named as one of the companies involved in what would be called transfer pricing, if you will. So these are not statements that I'm making or you're making. These are statements which are already there in public domain. This company is involved in some of the KG Basin, uh, shall we say, uh, charges of siphoning off of money by claiming high infrastructure costs and then recovering it as a part of the their share of the revenues which had to go and to pay for this infrastructure. This time, this has come regarding the uh, pipeline company. All right. And uh, this is also people have been charged. Okay, let, 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 let me go, let, let me go uh, step by step then. On Monday, a Dutch court released three individuals who had been arrested for three days. These three individuals... Released, been released on bail? Yes. No, they have been released saying they are not required for interrogation any further. You see, the prosecuting agency is the Netherlands Fiscal Intelligence and Investigation Service and the Economic Investigation Service. So... FIODs... That's right. ECG. And so the, uh, the court has said since they are not required for questioning, they can be released from prison. Now... These three individuals who have been arrested were former employees of a Dutch pipeline firm, which is called AHAC NL, NL as in Netherlands. Now, this particular Dutch company, it's one of its associate companies, were part of a consortium of, invest of independent contractors from India, from China, from Russia, from the Middle East, etc., 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 who were engaged in building a 1,400-kilometer-long pipeline which starts at Kakinara in Andhra Pradesh and travels all the way up to Bharuch in Gujarat after traversing Telangana, Karnataka, Maharashtra. This so is from the, this Andhra is Pradesh to Gujarat. from the right. East Coast, gas to the uh, West Coast. Now, now hear me out. This company, which was a company which was set up by Reliance Industries Limited, but eventually became a private company of the head of Reliance, and not a part formally of Reliance Industries Limited, it became Mukesh Ambani's company, and was called Reliance Gas Transportation Infrastructure Limited. Now, this company then has a Can new you tell us what avatar. happens if you make it from a Reliance company, RIL company, into a company in which only Bukesh Ambani was a proprietor. Because Reliance Industries Limited is a widely held public limited company. Its shares are quoted in the stock market. It has to meet various regulatory, uh, uh, it has to adhere to various regulations which are put out by the stock exchange authorities, by the Securities and Exchange Board of India. Whereas, if it is a company which is privately promoted and owned by Mr. Mukesh Ambani, then these, the regulatory oversight is far, far less. And you also don't have to disclose as much Correct. as you would otherwise. Correct. Because there are shareholders there. And shareholders means you have to have public information. Absolutely. A lot more information has to be disclosed to the public at large. But if it's a closely held private company, then less information has to be disclosed. So let's get back to the story. Reliance Gas Transportation Infrastructure became East-West Pipeline Limited. And as we are talking, a Canadian investor called Brookfield is reportedly going to be investing or has obtained the clearance to invest the equivalent of about 2 billion US dollars in purchasing the assets of this 
company which is a loss making company because the company is making losses because not enough gas has been produced from the Krishna Godavari basin and therefore it is unable, therefore it is uh, uh, incurring losses. In fact, the the Reliance, uh, one of, in, in one of his first uh, companies, uh, first cases of its kind, it's not Reliance Industries Limited but Group, they actually got the banks to roll over and re renegotiated the loans. But wait, let's go step by step. These three persons who were arrested and then released, they have been accused of over-invoicing to the tune of about $1.2 billion. That's a huge amount. Now, though this has been completely denied, what the court, what has been alleged, is that the usual story, this goes through all kinds of com convoluted tax haven, and finally, it to use their language, creamed off, creamed off, the public prosecutor of Netherlands, according to the AFP, the Associated France Press, is alleging that biometrics marketing creamed off. And they became what was called like a duplicator of invoices, an invoice duplicator. Let, let, let's take a few. Let's, let's yeah. take a step back, Paul. All right. What it means is, say, X amount of equipment was bought for the pipeline and what was charged or was services were rendered for the pipeline services were yes rendered, consultancy or other services yes. instead of x which was the actual cost because it went through a series of transactions it ended up being 2x 3x or 4x whatever it might be and the difference between the x the cost and what because of the series of transactions it becomes that is the difference which over a period of time and through multiple transactions is supposed to be estimated by the Dutch investigating agency. They have alleged 1.2 billion. billion. That's dollars. what the allegation is. That it's this not money the allegation. This is what the Dutch investigating agency is saying. Claim, so claiming, and, and this is the alleged amount that has been skimmed off, you can say. This is therefore the next step that where, who gets the money? Ah. Where is the money going? According to them, it's going to this entity in Singapore Correct. called biometrics marketing now so now let me yeah, now let me try and go first I take a step back and then I take a few steps forward in the budget that was presented in 2009 the union budget the then finance minister which is Pranab Mukherjee had given what was described and I, I mean, I wrote an article in Current News where it was described as the biggest tax break to the richest Indian. It came to about 20,000 crores. This was an income, the Income Tax Act was amended so that companies which set up gas pipelines, set them up operating, were exempt from payment of taxes. Now, interestingly, at that point of time, the, the CPI uh, leader, uh, Mr. Reddy, had, had openly written against it and, and complained to the Minister of Finance. Of course, nothing happened. But then, let's again see what happened thereafter. And that's where biometrics comes in. In 2013, the Enforcement Directorate actually wrote to the Reserve Bank of India and asked whether the loan that had been given by the Singapore branch of the ICICI Bank to the tune of about 6,500 crores, whether it was legal or not. Why did this happen? Because earlier, G.T. Venkateshwar Rao, he was an officer of the uh, government of India in the Indian High Commission. He had done a detailed investigation on this to suggest that there was more to it than met the eye. And in fact, uh, Anu Tandon, uh, who was a Congress member of Parliament, she had been interrogated. Now, the interesting part of the whole story is nothing of this, I mean, eventually nothing came out of these, all these, of all these investigations. And though this matter had been raised by people like Prashant Bhushan, Arvind Kejriwal, Reliance completely denied it. First, they said, yes, yes, they said we have nothing to do with biometrics. And they also said that the investments that were made by biometrics by into various Indian entities, including companies in the Reliance Group, were investigated, scrutinized, found to be above board, and they said they participated and fully cooperated in the investigation and the regulatory authorities have been apprised of true and correct. Like this is what Reliance has claimed. But the question is, and this is really we've never had a deep enough investigation, is biometrics itself. And, and 
companies that control biometrics, including a company called Strasbourg Holdings, in which a person who is a legal advisor to Reliance has a substantial investment. And I must here, you know, draw your attention to a letter that has been written by our friend, Dr. E. S. Sharma, who was former Secretary of Economic Affairs in the Ministry of Finance. He's written a, a long letter to the Cabinet Secretary, Mr. P. K. Sinha, saying that the Indian investigating agencies have not proceeded, they proceeded, in his words, rather hesitantly, despite the report given by the Indian High Commission's officer, that this matter, as we already discussed, is in the Supreme Court of India. And the question he asked is, has this been disclosed to the Supreme Court of India? And at the end of the day, there is a report of the Controller and Auditor General of India, which has accused the Reliance Industries Limited, which is a major contractor in the Krishna Godavari gas basin, uh, whole uh, that that whole uh, project of having under over invoiced equipment. Now, and we had already even in NewsClick, but well, NewsClick was in uh, in actual existence at the time. We had looked at the CAG report, and very clearly, certain items, including the equipment, the barges, the uh, what is it? Platforms, platforms platform, platform, drilling platform, platforms, drilling platforms. They had. They appear to be highly overpriced, and the CAG report does point that out. Okay. So you have written on it, we have written on it, so this is on the record that, and this is really on the record that CAG has done this audit and found this a problem. Now, but I want to come back. There, there's to the one other angle, and this is what Dr. Sharma has pointed out, which is very interesting. He's saying today the ICICI Bank has come under the scrutiny of the CBI and the Enforcement Directorate and Mrs. Chanda Kocher is being interrogated. So, according to Dr. Sarma, the government should investigate ICICI Bank's connection with biometrics. 6,500 crores that you talked about. And whether, I mean, he, he's, made, he's, he's made a very interesting point. He says in much smaller cases of alleged money laundering, Central agencies conduct raids, arrest people. How come? They're, they're, they're not showing that much enthusiasm. Is it because it's uh, the big fish are uh, could be involved? And the big fish have different rules. The two things before we uh, wind this up. What I would like to also talk about is that very clearly, the Dutch have evidence of some kind of over invoicing. They are saying one point two billion dollars but they seem to have seen the web the trail that is there, web of transactions through which this 1.2 billion surplus has gone. Now, 1.2 surplus, billion surplus going to biometric is one part. But the other part, that this was skimmed off a project which was an infrastructure project. Land's claim is, well, this did not lead to any loss on the part of the people because this money, this loss was never passed off to the consumers. And I, I think that's creditors. a bit of a red, red herring. Yes. I mean, what they're saying is that, look, we have in this country a petroleum and natural gas regulatory board, and they determine what should be the price of gas. Therefore, the suggestion that by spending more on equipment in the pipeline, we uh, somehow, uh, the consumer has been cheated, according to Reliance, is uh, not an issue. Now, the point is, I think this diverts attention from the real part of the story. Yes, we have uh, officially administered prices of gas. We have a regulatory body called the Petroleum and Natural Gas Regulatory Board. But this has got, some, this has got something else. This is something else. Did, was more money spent in building that pipeline than what was, what was required or what was warranted? And if... In, and the authority which was building the pipeline knew about that. And if in the process of sourcing the equipment and paying for services from different companies across the world, the Indian players ended up playing much more than what was should have paid. And if indeed this money was skimmed off or, or, or to use the, the phrase of the Dutch public prosecutor, creamed off. This is something 
worth investigating. And, 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 and I dare say, one last point. As in the case of the Herb Falciani expose, I don't, you shouldn't expect anything to happen in India. If anything would happen, it's going to happen over there, over there in Netherlands, yes. But you know, Pranja, one issue is if more money has been paid and $1.2 billion has been creamed off, let's forget the biometrics, lands connection, not having been proven, if that is so. Let's leave that out. Point still remains $1.2 billion was overpaid by Reliance. So they're either saying they were foolish, they paid overpaid by $1.2 billion, which could therefore be creamed off, or they have to say they're complicit. So either or. And the argument that you said, ki there is a board which determines the legitimate price, there are very few pipelines being built. This is one of the biggest pipelines. That this is built. one of the longest pipelines that has been built in recent times. Yes. Besides, you know, the initial reports that were put out by the Press Trust of India didn't mention East-West Pipeline. It, uh, but, I mean, uh, it didn't take uh, too much to guess because there are only two, two companies that build pipelines. One is Gale, Gale which is, is earlier called land. the Gas Authority of India Limited, so, and this company. And the point again here is very simple, that if you're building the major pipeline, which you were at that point of time, then obviously the cost of that pipeline you disclose to the, your regulatory authorities does get built into the cost that ultimately consumer will have to pay as transportation cost. Yes. So to argue then, then that the, the, how, how you prove it is another story. Yes. But what you can say without fear of any contradiction that if indeed these allegations have any basis, if indeed, and this is for the courts to judge, at the end of the day, who would be the loser? The exchequer of this country. Thank, thank you very much, Poroje, for trying to make this, shall we say, financial transactions and the consequences thereof clear to our viewers. Thank you very much for watching NewsClick. Do keep watching this and other shows.